Okay, in this video we're going to continue where we left off from the last video uh, in which we were creating a function to find substrings within a superstring. Okay, so we're looking for the location of some substring inside a larger superstring. Okay, now Python has this functionality built in already. Uh, it is just the find command, so I could say uh, catch uh, the find method that's on all strings. We can say find, and what do I want to look for? I want to look for uh, th. Okay, so that starts at index two. Right, so this is the basically the, the functionality um, that we're looking for and that we, we got last time. But there's also the concept of adding additional parameters. So a starting index and an ending index. So what if our string was bigger and it's something like catch and hatch? And we wanted to know, you know where we could locate the TCH in this. So if I run this, the first match is still at TCH. Right? So if I want to find the next match, you can add a parameter in here, and that's the starting location. Right? So the starting location should be one more than my last find. Okay, so last find, I'm going to say is catch match. Dot. Let's just go ahead and, make, ahead and make catch hatch our super string. Alright, so our last find is going to be super.find, and we're looking for tch. Alright, so let's print out last. We see that's index 2. Alright, so this time we want to find another. Right? And we want to look for TCH because in our super string there are two instances. So we have to start our search after our first find. Because so I, I'm putting in the index to start at. Now if I put the index of the match, it's still going to be two because it's gonna start looking at two T and it'll see that we have a match immediately. So I need the last index plus one because last was holding the value of two, right? So now here, we can print and see what another is. So this is an eight. So in our super string, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And sure enough, that's another match. So we can go through a very large string and we have to, um, we, we can find, um, all of the instances of a particular substring in this way, but we have to run a loop. So in this way there are uh, two instances, right? We would want to run a loop because this string might be very, very large. Okay. Now in the in the last video we had find substring and there was one small uh, thing that we uh, that I forgot to do uh, and that is implement this start index. I had it up here start index equals zero. The only difference, it's really one small piece of code, the only difference is where in our super string are we starting out. So by default that's zero, start index, right? And down here p is our super string, that's the index of our super string. So instead of starting out at zero, which is the default behavior, since start index is defaulting to zero unless the user provides something, we need this to be start index. And so now we can go back down to our test cases and we can try something here to make sure the start functionality works. Um, so we'll add a little line here. And we want to find the substring and we'll do the same example we just did over there. We, we have, we want to find TCH in catch, uh, catch and hatch. And then we want to find, so this will be last and then we're gonna find the substring again but we're gonna start at last plus one and then print last again and we could do this repeatedly 
right, so let's exit out of here. And I've got a uh, fine string. I'll run that with Python 3. Python 3. Okay, so here we find a match at 2 and a match at 8 and then negative 1. So the way we could do this in a loop is we could say um, the last index is we start out at index 0. So this is the index of the last match and we don't have a match yet to start with so we're just going to start out the last match at 0. Um, actually let's start out at negative 1 and while actually we don't have a match so let's start it out at none okay so while the last match index so we're always getting an index value from find substring so while last match last does not equal negative 1 We're going to run this code. All right. And we can still print the last one if we want. But in this way, we're gonna find we're gonna print out all of the locations. Last here is going to be the first instance. So TCH, this is gonna be at uh, index 2. Right? So each time here I'm going to pass in last. Now here this this works because this is the starting point of my search. Right? I can say uh, here if last equals none start equals 0 else start equals start uh, last plus one okay so so why am I doing this so to start out with last is uh, equal to the none value so is none not equal to negative one that is true none is not equal to the value negative one okay so if none is equal to none then we have this start variable that we want to start at zero Otherwise, we want start to equal last plus one. So if last does not equal none, then that means it should be uh, an integer, right? It's going to be an index value from the last time we ran the loop, right? So this will be an index. And we want to start at whatever our last find location was plus one, okay? So in this way, we can add this third argument, start. <clears throat> All right, and, and this will print uh, each of our finds. All right, so last is a variable that's meant to hold the index of the last find. So maybe, you know, we could call this last find if it adds clarity. All right. So the last find, we start out with no find. Uh, if last find does not equal negative one, uh, we run the loop, and then last find equals none. So this is for our beginning condition. Uh, then start equals zero. All right, and there's a few different ways you could code this, obviously. So uh, let's run this and see what we get. Three. Find substring. And here we have 2 and 8 and then negative 1. So this loop is going to find all of the instances. So we can prove that this is sort of more useful by having a superstring here and our substring. So our substring is tch and our superstring is catch hatch. But we'll do some copy and paste here. We'll do some copy and paste <clears throat> and make this longer. All right, so there should be many more matches now. But this loop will just find them all. 
and we'll go through and find each instance. Okay, so 2, 8, 14, uh, 20, 26. So it seems like it's going up by 6, and that makes sense because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you have another match. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then you have another match, right? So every 6 character starting at index 2, and it's printing those all out automatically. All right, so that's sort of how you could search for uh, a string, a substring in a large, a larger superstring, right? The examples we did before were with tiny superstrings. All right, so uh, how could I find out how many matches there are? Well, I can just add a variable count equals zero, all right? And then if last find does not equal negative one, count plus equals one. All right. And then here I can say uh, how many matches. trim this down to see to make this more readable so there's going to be four matches here so this should be four we run this there were four matches okay so this is how we can count our matches we need some sort of while loop like this so uh, this isn't particularly interesting yet but what we're going to do is um, we're going to, to locate an ebook online um, so you can go to ebooksread.com and there's lots of different uh, ebooks and I do this a lot for playing around with large data sets okay so we, we can search, search for something like uh, Moby Dick right and then I clicked on this first one and you can download the text file and uh, I've already done that so here on the desktop here we have this uh, Moby Dick text file and it's quite large it is uh, about 1.2 megabytes I believe Okay, so that's an awful lot of text, but this is all uh, just plain text, right? It's not formatted in a PDF document or anything like that. Okay, so this gives us uh, an interesting, very, very large string if we, if we use this properly. Okay, so we could open this file and iterate through all the data in it, um, and, uh, but we might want to format it a little bit first. Okay, so there's there's some potential issues uh, with this. So one thing I want to do is I want to count all the words. So if I have uh, like the first line classic is call me Ishmael. So if I wanted to count how many times the instance call was found in this book, there's a couple different ways I could do it. And then I also then want to run my find substring and see if if our data matches. Okay, but first, first things first. I want to <clears throat> sort of clean up this uh, input. Right? What do I mean by clean up? Well, there are some issues we have to look at. Right? So if I'm searching through this, um, I don't want the hyphens right next to any particular word. Right? I'm actually searching for the word and not the hyphens. Um, here we have uh, we have carriage return and then a new line so I probably want to get rid of all the carriage returns to make everything a little bit easier to parse right um, little things like this we have capitalization so I'm probably going to want to make uh, all of the capital letters lowercase so that's going to help me parse everything but the way I do this is going to be tricky right because so we have a, a, a double hyphen here or, or a dash which is like, like a long pause but if I just remove that then we see off then that's not a word right so I want to replace all of these instances with a space right but then something like here gets tricky because we have a space there right but that's okay so we have to figure out how how what are the errors in our input um, some of it will be like uh, punctuation at the end right we don't if we're parsing this and we're splitting over spaces to find all the words right we would get something like this 
right? Which is not uh, not what we want. So we would probably want to replace all of the punctuation marks, uh, even commas, that sort of thing, with white space, right? So we we'll replace that with that. All right, so um, we could do this using our find function. Python has some some built-in functions to help us do that, though. Um, maybe we will go over how to uh, implement some of those. But it has a uh, replace function that will replace all instances of something. All right, um, and then after that, let's see what all things do we want to replace? Just all the function punctuality. The uh, we want to get rid of the. Uh, carriage return and the new lines right anything else we want to make everything lowercase we want to replace the hyphens with a single space um, quotation marks uh, probably replace with the empty string alright so let's take a look at this um, we're gonna try to parse this down um, so I'm going to change the name of this so it's a little bit easier so I'm going to rename this file, and again, I got this from ebooksread.com, it's free. And so it's sort of a nice place to go um, if you want to play around with, with large data sets in your programs. Okay, so this is Moby Dick, Aaron Melville. Alright, so I've renamed my file, and now I'm going to make a new file that is going to take this in and we're going to clean up our book. Right, let's move that back. All right, we want to clean up our book. So <clears throat> let's open the file for reading. And then um, one point megabytes is sort of a lot of data to look through uh, but it's not too much for computers these days if we were if we didn't if re resources were a thing like say this this book this text file was gigabytes we would change the way that we're we're reading the data but I'm still gonna read it all at once into memory because that's a little bit easier for what we're trying to do uh, so I can say the book data is equal to um, we have to have this this file F is equal to file.read. So we're going to read in all of this data and then we're going to say, sorry, that's f.read, and then we're going to say f.close. Alright, and just to verify that we have all of this Moby Dick data, we're going to print that out. And I forgot to put my flag in here. So we're, we're opening this file for reading. Okay, so file f, we are calling the open, uh, open function passing in the title of the file. We're opening it for reading, collecting the data using f.read, and then closing our file. And then just printing it up. So let's see what we have here. This is gonna be cleanup. All right, and sure enough, we got everything down here. But notice we've got, we still have to work on cleaning all this stuff, and we got quotation marks and all this, all this good stuff. So <clears throat> what are the cleanup things that we need to do? So I'm going to say data equals, first of all, data dot lower is going to put everything to lowercase. Let's run it again. And everything that was capitalized here is now lowercase. So that's good. That's going to give us consistency for words like at the very beginning, call and call me Ishmael is a capital C. And we, if we want to count all of the instances of the word call, then we have to make sure a, a call with a capital C is also counted just like call with a lowercase. So the easiest way to do that is just to make everything lowercase and so we, then we don't have the problem. Right, then we need to start removing um, removing items, right? We need to remove quotation marks, any uh, punctuation. So we can say, um, we can continue on this dot replace we want to replace um, exclamation points with the empty string. We want to replace uh, quotation marks with the empty string. Oops. So we have to have a separate dot replace call. 
Okay, so each one of these is, uh, this is parsing through the entire data value, right, and turning every single character to lowercase and then returning that. So this is a string, and then on this new lowercase string, we're calling dot replace, and it's searching through the document for uh, exclamation points and replacing it with the empty string. So this is basically just removing uh, these items, right? So we can do uh, something here, I think. No, we can't do that. If you add a backslash here, it allows you to go to the next line. All right, so this will remove the exclamation points. So this is stern all. We see there's one right up there. That should remove that one. And then uh, the quotation mark above it. All right, so stern all and the quotation mark are, remo are removed. We need to get rid of. Uh, the apostrophes. So this is a little bit more tricky because there are words like it's. So we're going to have to uh, combine some stuff. So there are things we could do to clean this up, but we're not going to worry about every little detail. Um, <clears throat> we could replace, we could find all instances of it apostrophe s or any instances of apostrophe s and replace it with something that doesn't have uh, an apostrophe in it and then remove all the apostrophes and then swap it back in. There's lots of different things to do to prepare your data for you know whatever it is you're trying to do with the data. Okay, So this is a large body of data and so we're going to see obviously there are, are things we have to do. So I'm going to try to move through this kind of fast. There's lots of different things we could do to make the data perfect but this is you know just an example so I'm not going to get the data exactly perfect. So let's just remove uh, apostrophes altogether um, and then we want to remove uh, periods, we want to remove commas, we want to remove question marks, right? And so as we see here, maybe there's a better way we could do this. We're doing, we're calling the replace function a lot of times, right? So maybe we need a, a loop here. So <clears throat> uh, characters to remove. underscores, it's sort of more the Python style characters to remove. And what characters do we want to get rid of? What? The exclamation point, the quotation mark, the uh, apostrophe, the comma, the period. All right, and there are better ways of doing this with regular expressions, but I haven't covered those yet. So. Uh, we won't do that, but this is a this would be a good place to use a regular expression if you're familiar. Um, so a question mark, and then what else do we want to get rid of? Um, we'll just go down the line. Any sort of special character, essentially colons, semicolons, um, any sort of brackets, parentheses. Right, and this is a little bit tedious, but we need to clean up the data so we get good results. All right. <clears throat> um, now these are the things that we just want to remove altogether. <clears throat> there are other things that we, we might want to replace with, say, a space. For example, we wanted to replace you know, the double hyphen. We want that to be replaced with a space. Right? So we can't put that in here, our characters to remove. Right. And so what we're going to do is we're going to say for character in characters to remove, we're going to say data equals data dot replace. And we're going to replace the character C with the empty string. So this is going to do all of this for us in one, one big loop. All right, so let's see how far this gets us. So that's pretty good. We've removed uh, a lot of the issues. We can sort of scan through and see what we've got. Um, 
Yeah, not bad. So we need to we need to take care of this double hyphen issue. We can replace that with a space. Okay. Now there's some some weird stuff here that uh, we have like a hyphen here at the beginning, and seems like that this is all one one word. But this is sort of odd. This is a one-off case because normally if, if the word is split phonetically you would have a hyphen at the end of the line. So and also this isn't really like a word. So we're just going to ignore that one. Um, it seems like it should be fine. It looks like all we really have to do is the double hyphens that show up a lot. Okay, any other uh, any other things? I don't see anything else. So we'll just do that. We're going to replace um, the double hyphens, so data equals whatever data did before, and then we're going to replace the double hyphens with one single space. Okay, so here we're not just removing items, we're replacing it with a single space. Now that is, uh, that doesn't matter for something like this, but at the top we saw when we printed out the text file, um, there was a situation where there was a hyphen in between two words. Right, like here. These are two separate words that we want to count. All right, so uh, we're going to replace that and then run the program again, and we see all the hyphens are gone. All right, and uh, one other thing we want to remove here is if we look at the original book. Let's close this. It's just telling me the file is too big to run a linter on. Um, I want to remove all these carriage returns. Okay, so we'll just we'll still keep the new lines for now, but I want to remove all the carriage returns. So that means I'm going to have to add an item here. The carriage return character as a string is backslash r, and so we're going to remove that as well. All right, and that shouldn't show up here. We won't be able to tell. All right, so um, that's good. We've removed that. So now what we have to worry about is if we look back at this file, <clears throat> there's issues like this with uh, space. Basically what I want to do is I want to get everything separated by one single space and then I can just split the string by the space character and have a huge list of words and then I can go through that list of words and count items. Right? So I can check to see if one of those words is in some dictionary. If, if it is, then I add to the count. If it's not, then I add the item to my dictionary and set the count at one, right? And that sort of thing. So I'm going to iterate through everything in that way. But what I want to do is I want to sort of get rid of uh, these spaces. I want to get rid of, um, I've got these extra lines here, right? So basically, I'm probably going to want to split the entire file over a new line character. So that basically means every single line is going to be in a list. Right? That's going to be the lines of this entire book. And then for each line, I want to go in and probably split that over the space character. Now remember, these characters are going to be gone. This is going to be a space. Right? This would be a space. So we'd split everything over a space character. Now in this case, we have two spaces. So the item in between here is going to be the empty string in the list. Right? This would be one item in the list then the empty string would be one item in the list, then we have a space character, and then that would be an item in the list, then we have a space character, right? So there are gonna be some issues with uh, space characters, and, and here, for example, this entire line is just going to consist of the empty string, okay? So that's fine, that's just something we're gonna have to deal with. All right, so back to uh, book cleanup. All right, so uh, <clears throat> let's get the lines of the book into an array. So lines equal uh, data dot split. And we're just going to split over the new line character. Right. And then um, instead of printing out data, we can say for line in lines print line. That should basically print out the same stuff. So for every single line in our list of lines that we got, 
we're going to print out that line. And this should basically look the same. And it does. So that's good. Uh, but we want to get rid of all the lines that don't really have any data on them. Right? So we can say <clears throat> uh, if line, so if it doesn't equal the em empty string, right? So if line does not equal the empty string, right? That's the same as saying if line. But if line also means something a little bit more, uh, that would be if line uh, does not equal none also. Right, so if line exists, it's something that would evaluate to none, or, or, or Boolean false, rather. <clears throat> um, so we can say, if line exists, then we'll print the line. So a lot of these empty lines here are going to go away. Right, so all of those blank lines have gone away. So that's good. What else do we want to do? Well, we want to get rid of space, uh, space at the top, or at the beginning of each line, right? And if there's any space at the end, we want to get rid of that as well. So we can do that with the uh, strip function. So we can say line stripped equals line dot strip. And by default, you, you can put in a character here, and it'll strip those off. Um, but by default, if you don't add an argument, it strips off white space. That includes tabs, um, new lines, and uh, just the space character. Okay, so if stripped, then then we'll print out stripped. Okay, so we can run this, and we should see a lot of this white space go away. All right, now we're now we're getting closer, right? Now we see mostly just words. Okay, so we can join all these lines back together uh, with a space character. So each one of these is one particular line in our list. We can join those all back together with a single space character. So then there would be, after this line, there would be a space, and then this line, and after that line, there'd be a space, and then this line. So this would make the entire book just one uh, continuous uh, series of words. Now here's something tricky that we didn't see before. We have all of these uh, extra spaces. Okay, so um, what we want to do with that, this gets sort of tricky. We can go over each line. Oh, this will be fine. We'll, we'll just split everything by uh, the single space character, and then sometimes they'll be empty strings, so that's okay, and we'll just ignore those. So that'll be all right. Um, <clears throat> all right, so how to do this. So strip lines. is going to equal an empty string. And instead of printing out the strip lines, we're going to say stripped lines dot append. And so we're going to add the stripped line to our list of stripped lines. Right. And then at the end, we're going to join all of the stripped lines together with the space character, the space string. So uh, this is how you join items of a list together in Python. You specify the string you want to join them with. So it's sort of the opposite of the split function. So here, if you have a big, long string, you can make it a list by splitting over a character. Here, if you have a list, you can specify a character and then say join and pass in the list. Okay, And then this will give us our big string. So this is our big, we can call it a blob. It's a, it's a string blob of data. All right, and then here we'll print out the blob, and we should see mostly pretty clean data. All right, so now we got rid of all those new lines, and we just have words at this point. And there's going to be a couple spots here 
uh, but that's not really that big of a deal. So we're going to split everything by a space character, and which means occasionally here, like in this type of situation, there's going to be an empty string in between those space characters. This is going to be one gigantic list, right? And I don't see anything else that should be an issue. All right, so we've got this blob. Now what do we want to do with this? So we might just uh, save this to a file. So this, and we'll use a separate program to sort of parse parse this data. Okay, so uh, we're going to open a file for writing. So we're going to say f equals, uh, let's see, open. And what do we want to call this? Um, data.txt and we're going to open this file for writing and we're going to say f dot um, write and we're going to write this big blob of data to the file and then f dot close okay so this file all we did was we read in um, a, a file that had the data that we wanted and we had to sort of clean it up depending on what you're trying to do so in this case we're trying to count uh, the number of individual words and, and get a count and see see which word is used most All right, and then we're gonna get a big dictionary of all those items and then we're going to look at our substring and see if our substring will go through and find the same numbers right and it should be close uh, I can't think of any reason why it wouldn't match up exactly, but we, I haven't looked over this data completely, so uh, we'll see how it goes, All right? All right, so we've cleaned up this data, and I need to run the program one last time. Okay, now we have book data down here, and we can, we don't need to look at that anymore. Book data. So this is a large file still, but we don't have all that extra stuff. We don't have any of the punctuation, right? That sort of thing. So what we want to do is go through, first open this file, uh, split all the data in this file by a space, and then um, iterate over each one of those words. Now we could do this by just iterating over one character at a time, and then we encounter a space. We could grab that and say, that is one word and then check to see if this word is in our dictionary right there's a number of ways to do this but I'm going to use this is probably not the most efficient way of doing this but this is going to uh, be probably the easiest to code right so for what we do we're doing that's that's probably preferable okay so here we're going to um, we want to find the word frequency here so word frequency how frequent the use of one of these words is. Okay, so this is a Python program, and we are going to have the file f. We're going to open. This is book data. This is our clean book data. Book data.txt. And we're going to open this for reading. We say um, data equals f. Dot read and f dot close. Okay, so we have this data. Now we can say um, words is going to be data dot split, and we're going to split that over the single space character. Alright, so we can run that. Uh, we want to run. Um, nope. What do we name this? Word frequency, right? Word frequency. All right. So uh, for word in words, print word. So this is going to be the same thing, except it's going to print one word at a time. So this might take a minute, depending. It, it takes a little bit of time to print something when, you, when you're printing uh, thousands of lines. That's usually the bottleneck as opposed to the actual program. Um, so let's run this and see. Yeah, that did take a little bit, but not too long. So uh, right now we have a situation where 
uh, one word per line. So that's good. So what we want to do is make a dictionary. So this is going to be our frequency dictionary. And we're going to set it equal to an empty dictionary. Okay. And if you use the in operator with a dictionary, it's going to check to see if the word is in the dictionary as, as a key value. So the idea here is uh, if we, we have the word call. And when we first have the word call, it's one. That's going to be the first thing we find, right? And, and call me Ishmael is the first line. There's also chapter and different things like that that are going to be in here. But this is the key. So every time we encounter call, the first time we encounter the word call, we're going to add it to our dictionary and put the number one there, right? So each time we're going to check to see if this word is in our dictionary. If it isn't, we're going to add it and then put the number one as the value. If it is already in our dictionary, then we're going to take that value and increment it by one. So in this way, we're going to count all of the different uh, items that we have. All right, so uh, let's go through and do this. We're going to have the empty string or the empty dictionary to start with. So for our first is if we have a word, right? Because there's going to be some times where this is just the empty string. So if there's a word, uh, we don't want to print the word. We want to check to see if the word is in our dictionary frequency. Then we're going to say access the item. So this is going to be the count number. Remember, for frequency is a dictionary. So if this was call. And it's had a number one here. So this is this would be like the second time we encounter the word call. If call is in our dictionary as a key, right? That's what the in key uh, keyword in Python does. It will check to see if a string is in the keys of your dictionary, right? So if it's in there, then that's then we already have an entry. So we just want to increment that value. So we could say frequency word plus equals one. If it's not in our dictionary, then we will say add it frequency word and just set it equal to one to start with. So this is going to add one, and if it's not in there, then we're gonna we're gonna um, add it to our dictionary and then just set the initial value to one because we've counted one of them at least at this point. All right. So here at this point, this will get us to an interesting place where we have. Uh, a list of the frequency of all the words, right? And so then we can print out our frequency table. Uh, let's see. Set object does not support item assignment. Oh, that's because I left this in here and my syntax was bad. There we go. That's what it should have been, and that was just an example anyway, so I need to get rid of that entirely. And add this back to plus equals. Okay, so that was just because I was doing the example and left it in. Let's run that again. And so this is our list of words. We see a lot of them just occur once, but we want to find the words that occur the most. All right, so we want to scan through this and find the largest, largest word. So this sort of gets into sorting algorithms and the best way uh, to do that. This is sorting comes up all the time in uh, computer science. Um, so we're going to take some shortcuts here and not actually implement. Well, we might. Uh, this video will get a little long if we do that. Um, so one first things first, this is sort of hard to read. So Python has a library you can import called PrettyPrint. So import pprint, and that makes this nicer. So I can call pprint is the library, and then call the pprint function. And this is going to print this dictionary out in a nicer way. 
so one per line and I get a better sense of what's happening now so we have your is used 289 times you is used 877 times right so we don't really have to sort this to find out uh, different instances of, of words um, we want we can just import our find substring and we can see if some of these match and that should be enough for this video sorting is a separate thing that we're gonna get into later and I'll have different videos for that All right, so uh, we'll use find substring here and we'll see how many instances of zone our, our um, function finds right and then we'll compare that to the Python find All right, so find substring here now I'm going to introduce you to something uh, called modules where we can make our own module so just like with this pretty print module we're importing a module this one we installed it's installed by default when you like it's like the sys module it's installed by default when you install Python uh, but we can also create modules so in this case find substring is a module I might want to use this function that I made in other projects okay so <clears throat> because of that I want to import this right and you import by the name of the file now if I import this, this code gets executed, right? And in this case, we're just defining the function. So that's fine, but we don't want all this other stuff to run. Right? These are the test cases. Right? So there's a couple things we could do. We could comment all that out. But then we might want to run the test cases. If we run the file directly, we might want to run the test cases. So there's a little trick here that you can do in Python. You can say there's a special variable name and it has the value underscore underscore main okay so any variables with underscores on either side double underscores those are special Python variables so whenever you run your file if the file was run directly from the command line and not imported then the value of name is main okay so what this does is it allows us to if we if we run this file directly then we'll run our, all of our test cases, right? So if run directly, test cases run. Put that up here, right? If it's not run directly, so if the name does not equal main, if we didn't run this file directly from the command line, then these test cases won't run, right? So we can import find substring and not run the test cases because we don't want all this cluttering up our program output. All right, so I'm going to say this. We're going to use this trick a lot. If name equals main, all right? And note, note the underscores. So you can do this on any file that you create. You can turn it into a module, and I can reference that in another file. So in this case, um, word frequency. I want to reference this find substring module. So word frequency is going to import and it's going to use the name of the file. It has nothing to do with this string. They happen to be the same, right? So I'm going to import find substring because it's the name of the file. So back to our word frequency program. I'm going to uh, import find substring. Now again, this is a module. So just like in pretty print, I had to reference the module and then dot and then access the function that existed in there even though they're named the same thing so same here I'm gonna access the find substring module and then find substring method that's in the module and let's say um, we are looking for we're looking through words um, Right, that's our list. Uh, actually, we want to look in data because words is the list, right? So this is the special thing we did to get the frequency. But here is the raw data. It's before it's been split by the space character and before it's turned into a list. So we want to look in our data for a particular substring. And the substring we want to look for is zone. So we're looking for zone in data and that's gonna find the first one 
So we have to use our loop again and see how many of these items we can find. Alright, so let's go back to uh, our file. It was find substring. Right? So we had this sort of method to find all of the instances. Right? So we have a count and we want to find how many there are. Right, so we start with last find equals none. We have a count while last find does not equal negative one. Uh, if there's last find, get a starting point. Right, so we can just copy and paste this mostly. So this is how we will count the number of items using our find substring. And we're going to have to tweak this a little bit. But we can pull this over here. And we will add a little bit. Okay, so zone is the substring that we're looking for in this case, zone. And then our superstring is our data. All right, so I'm going to remove this line and just paste in everything we had here and then, then clean it up a little bit. Okay, so we've got our substring and our superstring already, so we don't need these. We have our last find. That looks good. Everything should be the fine. This is going to print out the index each time. We don't need that. And here, <coughs> in our other file, the function was defined in that file. So you didn't need to use the library in front. Up here, we're importing the library. All right, so we have to say, instead of just calling find, find substring, we have to access the module called find substring, and then access the function. All right, so we're searching for the substring, and in this case it's zone. We're going to look through uh, the superstring, and then uh, use the starting, starting point of the last find plus one. All right, and so this will count how many matches for our substring. I'll put that in quotes. Now, if we look up here, that's zone. Now, one thing about our search, it will match that as well. And it will match that. Okay, so luckily these are all together, and we can kind of count those up. All right, so all of these are issues when you're dealing with large sets of data, uh, for formatting the data, trying to figure out exactly uh, what you're trying to find and what are some of the hangups you can find by parsing the data manually like we're doing here. Okay, so we'll run word frequency. So there were 11 matches for zone. And so that is, we have five, five. So that means there should be one more, uh, one more key in here somewhere. Um, so it looks like these are all in alphabetical order. 11 matches for zone. So probably one of these words has, um, it's like a compound word and it'll say something zone at the end, right? We could go through and look for that. Here we can say for key in our dictionary. dot keys is going to give us a list of those items. I can say if zone in key, we're going to print out the key and then also the value stored there. So this will be frequency key. There we go. So I was right there. We had uh, emblazoned, emblazoned. I don't know what that word means. But there's our missing count. 
right? So we had zone, zones, and zoned, which added up to 10, and then there was one more word in there that had zone in it, all right? And we found that. So our string function worked. Now, as you see, like, this is rather complicated to do in code. It seems like sort of a simple idea, but there's a lot of potential hangups. We had to start with raw data uh, that was unformatted. It, it doesn't parse necessarily very well. Right? As humans, we see the word call, and that's obviously the same as a lowercase word call. Right? But we need to uh, remove those. We have to remove extra characters. We have to deal with extra white space. We have to remove uh, semicolons, all these different things. All right? So this is, uh, this is a good example of parsing large string data. And so this is something that happens all the time in computer science. In fact, anytime you run a Python program, there's a parser that goes through and parses the string data, that is the text file, and it has to parse it and find out the location of different strings and different keywords and find out the semantics of what you're actually typing and what it's supposed to mean. Okay, so parsing string data is a huge part of computer science. Uh, if you think of a web page, a web page is just a text file. So the web browser has to grab the text and search for different tags, and if it finds certain tags, do different things, and if there are attributes on those tags. All of that has to do with string parsing. Now, we are doing this in sort of a crude way. We, we sort of cheated, and w w the best way to parse data is, is sort of from the beginning one character at a time, and then have sort of a state machine that keeps track of uh, what's going on, what state you're in semantically. Uh, but what we're doing, for what we wanted to do, just count up the words, this was a little bit faster. Okay, but there were some downsides to that, like we had a bunch of empty items in our in our list and different things like that. Okay, but anyway, this is just a good introduction into string parsing, uh, writing writing strings, uh, mimicking functions that Python uh, Python uses, like the find function. So we could also might as well go ahead and do that, and we can see if the Python find function finds the same number of items. We could say. Um, duplicate all this and really we should make this a function to, to count the number of items and instead of using our find substring um, function we're gonna say super dot find and we're looking for the substring and the, at the starting point so this is the Python version of our function you start with the super string and say dot find what are you looking for the substring and what point do you want to start Right. So ideally, we can duplicate this line and bring it down, and then we'll see that the matches should should be the same for both the Python version of find and our version of find. Yep. All right. So hopefully you learned some stuff here. That is kind of a lot of information, but these types of things are common to do. So it's good to play around with data. One of the things you could do is, is mess around with how, how you wanted to sort that data. Or maybe just look through the list and find the largest item, right? So the, the, we have this frequency data. Just find the, the item that has the most instances, right? Your has 249. So you could go through this list and keep track of the largest item you find. And then whenever you find one larger, you store that, right? And you, you could keep doing that. And in that way, you would find the largest item. And then you could remove that item from the list and find the next largest. Then remove that item from the list and find, find the next largest. And in that way, you could kind of sort the list, right? So there's different things you can do, but this is all really good stuff to think about because it comes up in computer science all the time. So I will scan through these uh, files one more time a little bit slowly so you can you can look at the code uh, let's see we were at we had book data cleanup book was the first one so this is what we did to kind of clean up the data we were working with All right and then we wrote it out uh, from there we wanted to do let's see word frequency so we open that book data. This is how we made our frequency dictionary. Uh, then we printed it out with pretty print. 
And then this is the special little thing where we see all of the keys that have the word zone in them. And then here we actually count the instances of zone, our substring and our superstring. So this is using our version of find and substring. And then down here it's the same thing except we use Python's built-in version. All right. So hopefully that, that helps. Try to code that up on your own uh, from scratch so that you know the ideas. It's a very, very useful exercise to try to do some of these things um, from scratch. Uh, obviously, it, it might sort of be a lot to do on your own at first. Code it up with me watching the video, and then try to code up different pieces of it by yourself. And if you get stuck, you can always look back at the video. All right? Thanks for watching.